I understand, and we're doing research on this, that under the tower of the flock was this chamber through which these two sheep were led, scrutinized for four days and nights, then taken up to the temple. I understand that there were living quarters under the tower of the flock, which brings us to the time that Messiah did appear. And when he did appear, indications are that he actually was born under the tower of the flock, consistent with Micah chapter 4, verse 8, in that manger where the sacrificial lambs were kept. And then when the Magi came, the wise men, he was not an infant, he was the child. When they came, apparently, under the same tower of the flock in the living quarters, we have the place where they found the young child and worshipped him. Now that brings us to this story that was forwarded to me by Robert Summers. I want to share it with you. Would it make sense that the God of the universe would display himself in human flesh and come down and dwell among us and take us to safety and security? The story, and this is a true story, in the Northland, there was a family that lived on the outskirts of a little community on a farm. The wife and the children were God-fearing, but the husband instead preferred agnosticism. It was Christmas time, and prior to Christmas, the wife said, I'm planning to take the children and go in. We're going to hear a message about the birth of God's son. The husband said, no, I, I don't want to go with you. <laughs> that really doesn't make any sense that God would visit the human race in a human form. That just doesn't make any sense to me. So he didn't go. Later that afternoon, as the family returned, an early snowstorm set in. So the husband, along with his family, sat by the fire. And uh, while the afternoon was waning on, there was a thud against the window. And then a second thud. The father, as his responsibility would lead him to do, went outside and he found two geese wounded. They had hit the window in that blinding, early, unpredicted snowstorm. He looked out in the field and there was the entire flock of geese. They were downed and they were wandering about aimlessly. So the man said, well, look, here's my barn to survive this storm and then get on their way. They need to be in safety. They're going to be in jeopardy here. So he went out to his barn and opened the doors wide. He got behind the geese and, and tried to shoo them in, but they just scattered. They couldn't get the idea that they were to go in to safety. It did more harm than good. So he said, all right, I'm going to have to try to lead them in. So he got some bread, and starting inside the safety of the barn, he led the trail and deposited the bread a few hundred yards out to the flock, and they still couldn't get the idea. So he went in. He tried everything. He tried clanging cymbals, couldn't get them in. Finally, he said, you know, if I were just a goose, I could go in and I could show them safety. So he went in the barn, picked up one of his own geese, walked through the flock, got to the other side, put his own goose down, and the goose made a beeline straight to the barn. Then, slowly, one at a time, the wild geese began to follow until all of them were safe inside the barn 
the goose that was like them had shown them the way home. Then he said, now I understand. Now I realize why God came down in human form because we need a way home. And in the sobs and quietness of the evening, he bowed his head and asked Jesus Christ to forgive his sins. It all made sense, and he became a Christian. My friend, God's greatest gift for you would be right now for you to receive his son. A Chinese businessman attended a service, and in that service, he sat on the floor. Afterward, he said to the missionary, do you have a copy of that Bible you were talking from? The missionary said, yes, I'll give you a copy, but you have to promise me you'll read it. A week later, the businessman came back. At the invitation time, he received Jesus. The missionary said, why did you respond? The businessman said, I knocked at the door of Confucius, but there was no answer. I knocked at the door of Buddha, but there was no answer. I knocked at the door of Mohammed, but there was no answer. But when I read this Bible, someone knocked at my door. I'm answering, I want him in my heart. Would you do the same thing? Right now, would you just pray this simple prayer? Just pray with me. Dear God, I'm a sinner. You're knocking at my door. I want you in. Lord Jesus, right now, I open my heart's door to you. Right now, I ask you to come in. I receive you as my Savior. Save me, and I will serve you with all my heart. Welcome home. Creation in the 21st century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.